Okay, awesome. Well, hello, ladies. Welcome. We are doing our live webinar tonight on how to network, meet more people, and essentially make friends as an adult. I know part of the reason why TLC started was because so many women found it difficult to make friends, including myself. And so I just want to open up the floor. And if you want to just make some notes in the chat and just let me know why are you here tonight and what do you hope to learn? And then you guys can fill that in while I'm talking and then we can go to that. I want to make sure that I give you all of the information you need. What we're going to be going over tonight are specific tools, where you can meet people, things that you can do to meet people, and really break down tools and tricks to make sure that you're meeting the people you need in your life professionally and personally. Because I know some people may be here for, for professional and other people may be here for personal. So you're going to be able to do everything we do tonight for all of the above. And so make sure you have, do you have a pen and paper handy? We're going to be doing writing as well. So I want this to be very interactive. But thank you for honestly taking the time tonight to, oh, here we go. People are writing things. Nope. Guys, you have to put something in. I'm just sitting here. <laughs> are you all awake? Are you ready? Anyone? what any any tips do you guys see the chat box yes oh here we go okay anna yes here not for meeting people per se but actually making meaningful relationships okay awesome that is huge too linda's here thank you and so we will touch on that but feel free if i don't touch on it enough let me know anna and we can actually have a discussion about that because i know that is a huge thing that a lot of women awesome okay same a lot of women are feeling that they're not making true connections. And there are a couple components that I have practiced within that as well. First webinar, awesome, okay. Brush up on networking skills, okay, professionally, awesome. Okay, this is fun. Okay, do you ladies mind if I tell you a little bit about myself and how this kind of all evolved? You can give me a wave if you're, if you're good. New. Okay. Awesome. So TLC started about three years ago, simply because of this topic. I felt like I was in transition and I feel like our society, our friends and family are really good at telling us how we should and shouldn't live. And I felt like everyone was on this conveyor belt and I had jumped off the conveyor belt long before and I felt very isolated and alone on my journey. However, I knew that if I felt this way, so many other people did too. And they were like you ladies are saying here, you're finding it really hard to connect and meet more people and why you're here today. So I literally started meetups in Toronto and using the, some of the techniques that I'm gonna share with you tonight, over in three months, we had over a hundred people attending our webinars on a monthly basis. And this continued to grow to now what TLC is with almost 20,000 members across Canada, the US and Australia. And I've used all of these things. So I'm super excited to share with you how I have done that. And a little bit about me is personally within TLC, I wanna create a community. Hey Kat. Oh, awesome. I love, thank you so much, ladies, for messaging. I'm new to networking, looking for professional, personal. Okay, awesome. So I really, within TLC, with through these webinars, we're now going to be doing weekly webinars. I want to provide you resources to help you connect to yourself, but also living your best life and to one another. I believe that having all of these things professionally and personally will just create really awesome momentum and help us change our connections with others and ideally change the world. So that's where my hope is coming from in doing these webinars and even within TLC. I want you to know that I, even though I'm doing these webinars and you may see me speak live at events, I am an introvert. <laughs> so I don't want you to be sitting at home thinking, oh, but she's an extrovert, she can do that. It's not the case. I will go out and be friendly and, 
and meet people, but I need so much downtime and I love hanging out by myself. So if any of you can relate, don't use being introverted and shy as an excuse not to meet people. It's just an excuse and I get it, but we all have a little bit of energy. So even if you only, we're gonna get to this, but I'm gonna throw this in right now. If you're an introvert and you, throughout these goals, you're thinking to yourself like, I can never do this stuff that Vanessa is talking about, then scale it back and say, I'm going to go out to this event or I'm going to do one thing today. I'm going to meet one person. I'm going to talk to one person. So scale any of these things back that we talk to, to apply to you, but not doing it is not an option. So I know you ladies can step up. Let's see if we have a couple things. Person, I've been in Toronto several years and it's difficult to network, make meaningful connections. Okay. I feel like many of you ladies are in the same boat. So I'm pumped. So let's get started. So I am going to, we're going to actually start with an exercise to get everyone on the same page. So whether you're here for personal or professional, I want you to get a piece of paper and you're going to separate it into three columns. I like that some of you are on video because then I know how much time to give you. Okay, so once you've separated into three columns, in the first column, I want you to think about the qualities that you want in the person or people that you want to connect with. Pick one, pick either personal or professional. I'd rather you pick a personal for this one because we're going to get to professional a little bit later, but I want you to really think about the qualities that you're looking for in a friend, in in someone within your network that a lot of you ladies said you want to be making a connection with. So who are these women and or men? This could even work for professional or sorry, personal and romantic relationships. So I'm going to give you a couple of moments to, to just write a list of those qualities. You can also add in qualities of the friendship you want to create. So it doesn't have to be a quality for a person. It can be that you want an open relationship. You want to be able to communicate both back and forth, things like that. But I guess they kind of do tie to the other person as well. Okay. And once you ladies are done that list, just put done in the chat box. So I know everyone's on the same page. Okay. Oh, you guys are quick. Awesome. Okay. So being very clear about the type of people you want to meet is really important once you decide to be bringing in different tools and techniques to meet these people. So now if we look at the second list, so the second column, I want you to really think what do these qualities mean to you. So last week or a couple of weeks ago within the TLC community, I had posted what kind of friendships are you looking for? And women were very good at knowing what they wanted. They wanted a woman who was loyal, you know, confident, who could do things. And I want you to really think about words are really powerful. And I want you to think about what do these words mean? So many people wrote loyalty. And then when I asked them, what does loyalty mean to you? They didn't even know. Does it mean that you want someone to be texting you back? Does it want, does it mean you want to meet someone once a week? Like what do these words actually mean? And be very clear of who this person is. So if there's any words in the first list that you need to define more, do that in the second column. Okay. 
And now I'm actually going to get you ladies to close your eyes for a second. And I want you to actually just take a deep breath. And I want you to picture this person. Picture the person with all of these qualities that you have just listed. And I want you to picture doing something with this person. Something fun that you both enjoy, that brings you joy and happiness, and really adds value to your life. And picture the types of conversations that you have, the types of things that you do together, the way that she carries herself and the way that she looks, the things that she wears. And the way that she laughs and presents herself with you. And the way that she treats you. and the types of interactions that you have together. Okay, take a deep breath and open your eyes. And I love this because when I started TLC, I could literally picture the types of women. I wanted to create friendships where we could be open where we could have different opinions and still have amazing conversations. We could also keep each other accountable, be happy for one another, be proud of each other's successes, and hold each other accountable to our own growth and triggers, and not let our insecurities impact our relationships. Knowing that if someone was upset or something, being able to support them in their growth instead of taking it out on each other. And that was my vision of what kind of friendships and personal relationships I wanted. And so I'm gonna give you just a couple minutes if you need to add anything to your list of what you're looking for in your relationships. Does anyone want to share some things on their list? You can put it in the chat box so I know where you ladies are at. Just pick, pick a couple. Or you can unmute yourself and share your list. That could be fun too. <laughs> Positive attitude about life. Great. Anyone else? Spontaneous. Oh, look at that. Two people wrote the same word. You guys should be friends. <laughs> cool. Love this. Awesome. So Oh, wonderful. You guys have such great things here. You ladies, sorry. I still say you guys sometimes and some people don't like it, so don't take it personal. Perfect. Okay, great. I love these lists and these are awesome things to have. Now I want to challenge you on this. So I'm going to give you some tips of how to meet these people. And you know what? I'm going to do this right now. And then I'm going to throw in the third column because this is my favorite column. But so think about things that you enjoy. And really when you, networking is so funny because so often people go to network instead of going to do things that they enjoy and then just meeting people while they're there. And you can always tell the difference when I'm at an event and there's people there to network they have a different energy to them. Like it's almost like they have an expectation of what is going to happen. So my biggest thing that I've always done, well now, I, I, this has taken some work, 
is when I go to an event and I'm going to meet people, I never have an expectation of meeting anyone. I just go to make a true authentic connection with a person and just get to know them and be curious. Curiosity, which some of you obviously know you are here, is your best friend when trying to network. And some of the things that I've done to meet people, number one, like I just said, find things that you enjoy and meet people while there. If you want to be spontaneous or you want to, what are some other things that people put that were? Um, yes, um, let me see humor. Maybe it's a comedy thing. So find things that you enjoy and do it. Don't let going by yourself impact you and make you not to go. You will meet people there. And so often we use a friend as a crutch to do something, but allow yourself the permission to go and make friends while you're there. I, it is, it is awkward in the beginning. I'm not going to lie, but once you start to do it, you will be able to meet these people while there. Instead of, I find even at TLC events, when people come with a friend, they don't meet as many people. But when they come by themselves, they always meet so many more people because they're willing and open to connect. And so be that person who is willing and open to connect to meet these people. The second thing that I did to make a lot of connections was I looked at volunteer opportunities that would bring me these kinds of people. So uh, whether it be, you know, a ball or a gala or whatever it is, I would call or email the organizer and say, do you need any volunteers for this event? Because I knew going to that event, I didn't want to, especially when I was short on cash, I didn't want to have to pay to go to all of these events. So I would just volunteer and volunteer, volunteering gets you in the door. It also gives you a position at these events that you are forced to talk to people because you are at coat check or you are wandering around selling raffle tickets. You have to talk to people and you have to connect. This is also really great to practice to network if you feel uncomfortable initiating conversation. So volunteering at, at as many events as possible. The third thing I did was also go, like I said, go to places where these people are. Many of the people that I wanted Oh, I think someone might have asked a question. I'm going to go in there and ask that and answer it in a second. But the other thing that I did was work or go to hotels. Now, I would work from hotel bars. And the reason I did this is me personally, I wanted to meet people that love to travel, that were entrepreneurs, that had a lot of just different experience. And I knew that's where people were going to go. So instead of going to a coffee shop, I would work from a hotel bar and initiate conversation with people that were there. I have met so many people at hotel bars, I can't even tell you. In Toronto, the Ritz Carlton knows me because I go there so often and I live in Toronto. So that is one of my hacks of also getting to know people. I think we might have a question in here. Um, when I met someone, they were confused on why I was speaking to them. Also, it's as if people don't want new friends, they already have their circle and don't want. So this can happen sometimes. Anna, where is this happening to you most? Because I have heard this a lot. And you know what? Sometimes that's just okay. Oh, because they're not your people. And so don't feel, she just said in life in general. That's totally cool, Anna. And maybe those aren't your people and that's totally okay. So I would think about yoga, gym, school, work, everything. Yeah, honestly, I would think that's okay. So the second part that we're gonna go into is going to also talk about that. So I really want, within this third column, it's really important that within all of our goals, personal and professional, we also take ownership of what we're bringing to the table. And Anna, I love your question. This is not me saying at all that these people are reacting this way because of you. It's not that at all. They may not be your people. But I, when I was always looking to network, I was always really getting in tune with the person I wanted to attract and making sure I was also this person. 
So when you look at this list, I want you to be real with yourself and ask yourself two questions. Is who I want to attract also who I am? And maybe sometimes some of those things aren't necessarily, aren't necessarily correlated. Like maybe you want them to have a real, them, them to be really funny, but you're not super funny. That's okay. Just have a sense of humor. <laughs> so just make sure that what you want to attract is who you are being. Because people who want those things are also looking for those things. The second question I want you to answer, and this is what the third column is for. Under every single item, I want you to ask yourself, am I currently bringing this to my own life? And so when I first looked at my list, I wanted many of the same things that people were already saying here, you know, spontaneous and adventurous and all of that, but I wasn't giving that to myself. And this kind of ties back to what I was talking about before of when you go to an event, go by yourself and do things that you like. Because so often we do not fulfill the list of qualities we want in a friend and are looking for that other person to fulfill it. And so we can never be our best selves by looking outside of ourselves to be that. And I know we have all been in those friendships or romantic relationships where we feel like we feel that pressure from the other person. We feel the expectation. We feel like they need us to text us all the time. But really, if we're looking for, let's say, loyalty, or like I just said, spontaneity, spontaneity, how can we be giving these to ourselves right now and take responsibility to be our own supporter and our own best friend? And so when I looked at my list, and I wanted to do a lot of things. I wanted to go to fun dinners and plays. I started saying, girl, you got to go this, to these things by yourself. And I, call, I started calling them me dates. And I started taking myself out on me dates all the time to be my own best friend. And then the people that I started attracting into my life, because I was already that person, was just astronomical to see the difference. And this is really just pushing the, the boundaries of us really becoming, number one, our biggest supporter and our best friend, and number two, not looking outside of ourselves to make us feel fulfilled and happy. So if we are looking for more connection, your answer may be yes, but I would encourage you to ask yourself, do I need more connection to self? Do I need really some more self-love in my life? Do I need to connect to my own dreams and what I'm looking for in my life? Every single word. You're looking for connection? Give yourself more connection to self. You're looking for more, let me look at some more words. You guys get the idea. More positivity? How can I be more positive in my life? So I want you to take a moment and in the third column, I want you to make a note of what you can do to bring more of that into your life. And it can be quick. You may need to spend a lot more time going into this column because it's really important. And if you are feeling challenged of you're not sure what to write, then let me know because I've done a lot of these and I can tell you what maybe you can do to yourself to feel to make yourself feel complete in that area. I know you ladies had a lot of things up here. Can anyone relate to this last column of not of maybe not giving yourself what you're looking for in someone else? Can I can I share? Of course, I love I it. I just can't, yeah. I can't get on my phone and type because then I have to move my phone. Yeah, um, so, <laughs> so uh, hi everyone, my name's Ashley. Um, I, I think I realized in the third column, so like one of my things is I put loyalty um, in a sense of like, 
so there's times where like all of a sudden I'll feel alone and lonely and I'm like, no one's reaching out to me. Like, why isn't anyone texting me to do anything? And, um, and then I realize I'm like, but wait a second, am I taking the time to reach out to these people on a regular basis? So I think what I'm looking for in people, I'm, I'm actually not doing myself. So it's like, if I want people to be loyal to me and remember me and keep that consistent connection, I have to do that too. And I think I've been one-sided on that. That's awesome. I'm yeah. so happy that you saw that. Yeah. And, and even when you are, Ashley, I think that the really beautiful thing about the third column is even in my experience, when I started to also take ownership and be that person, I also didn't care if they weren't because yeah. I love just being loving to them. Yeah. And then yeah. you, I had a better acceptance of, Hey, maybe they're just not my person. Or I, in truth, also when I did this, I did see my friend circles shift. And that sometimes was hard because mm -hmm. I lost some friends in the process that I still love, but really just knowing like our past may not be aligned right now. Yeah. And really just putting your energy towards the right things because we can do all of these goals and everything and life is such a beautiful experience, but life's also just energy. And in my opinion, nothing is worth, worth you losing your inner peace over. Yeah. And yeah. so often we just create so much, um, so much upset and anxiety over our relationships and relationships are so beautiful because in my opinion, relationships are a direct reflection of what we need to heal inside. Yeah. And so in romantic or friendships, anytime someone does something that upset me, I was just like, man, why are they so fake? It could just be something as simple as that. And I would be like, man, just means I'm going to try to be more authentic, you know, and just taking every experience as a lesson of how I can just continue to step into my best self. Yeah. As we don't want our relationships and our, our happiness to be dependent on other people. It's true. Yeah. yeah. Thanks so much for sharing. That's awesome. Thanks. Yeah. I support and cheerlead so many others and their personal endeavors when I realize now. A hundred percent. Yes. Yes, Joanne. Being your own cheerleader. Honest to God, I had that too. Man, I had all of these. <laughs> Um, I really was like, why aren't people supporting me? And, um, yeah, for me, it was like the fakeness what really got to me when people weren't authentic. And I was just like, man, I guess I just need to be more authentic. And again, the cheerleading. Yes. Yes. Yeah, see, aha. I love aha moments. So good. Amazing. So keep thinking about this. And I journal about this all the time. Even now I'm like, why is this person pissing me off? What is this person showing me? And so every relationship, just think about like, what is this person showing me? Because again, you do not deserve to be anxious and upset about anything. It, it is just showing you what you need to heal within you. So this is so fun. Okay. Awesome. Um, and so I actually, we're going to do another little, um, meditation ish, but I want you to close your eyes and I want you to think about a situation that has upset you. Recently, a person that upset you professionally, personally, romantically. And I want you to, you, I'm sure you can already feel that emotion of that situation. And I want you to really feel what is being triggered in you. What are you saying to yourself in that situation? What are you expecting from them? And what are you looking from the other person to give you?
And now start thinking about what, how can I look at this differently? And how can I accept this person for who they are? Doing their very best in the way they know how. So one thing that I've really been talking to myself about lately is what would my inner being really think about this situation? And coming from a place of complete acceptance and love. And let me know if that resonates with you. If it doesn't, we just need to continue tuning into what that inner being thinks and feels. And when I say inner being, what that means to me is just like my best self. What does my best self actually do in this situation? And I always asked myself, even while dating and making friends, so I just kept asking myself in every situation, what does my best self do in this situation? And if I'm not my best self yet, I welcome that situation because it's helping me to become my best self. So I want you to really get in tune with this best version of yourself and who she is and tune with this ideal self and this theory of what does my best self do in this situation takes so much practice and consistency because in every situation it is like a muscle and it's once we accept and truly surrender to each experience as being a lesson and a, an opportunity for us to step up as our best selves it is sometimes exhausting because then we get these situations and we're like man but hey it's still forcing me to become and step into my best self and every morning i think about I tune in and do literally a three minute meditation and tuning into who is my best self. What does she think? What does she feel? And what does she do? And sometimes I have to tune into her every hour <laughs> during my day, but starting in that morning, tuning into my best self, it enables me to make so many better connections. And so I'm going to give you a moment while we're talking about this to just write down qualities of your best self. Who is she? What does she do? What does she act like? What does she feel like? And getting so in tune with this feeling, if it takes you a while to feel her, that's okay. It just means it's a muscle and it needs to take more practice. But now because I do it every day, I can tap into my best self in a moment. So even if I'm in a situation in meeting someone, and networking that may feel uncomfortable, I can tap into my best self because my best self, she just doesn't even care. And she can show up as her authentic self and not care what other people think and not care how she looks and not care if her hair's a mess and she has no makeup on, right? It's little things like that, that sometimes our head and our mindset take over and actually ruins our ability to make better connections and relationships. And so just take a moment, I'll give you a moment to write out your ideal self and what she feels like. And if you need to go back to this later today and continue to tune into who she is, it's super important for us to take ownership on who that person is so that we can cultivate the relationships that we want. I'll give you one more minute for that. And then we'll just move into the next um, section. This is kind of where that whole fake it till you make it thing comes in. But I don't necessarily, the one thing that I think that that statement is missing is you got to feel it <laughs> until you are it, right? Just you fake it, but you still have to feel her to become her. And so these tools are really helping you to continue to tune into that feeling of who she is so that you can cultivate those relationships. And I'm telling you, I have done this work 
I know sometimes it seems backwards. We're like, wait a second, I'm supposed to be networking and making more friends. Why is she telling me to take myself out on a me date? <laughs> but I'm telling you it works. And once you start with that, the people that you meet and the people that you connect with and the person that you show up as is just amazing. How are you ladies feeling? Are you still with me? Awesome. Love this. Oh, yay. I'm so happy. This is so weird doing a webinar. I wish I could just hug you all. Yeah. 100%. And that's, that's amazing. I agree. Sometimes when we are in a group of people, we like put on this face that isn't us. And now, honestly, TLC has been such a good gift for me because when I walk into any room, I go, I'm a hugger. Can I hug you? <laughs> and it just makes it real and like breaks it down because that's just who I am. And sometimes the person may say no, and that's okay. I've, that's never happened. But sometimes I can tell that they're a little awkward in the hug, but I'm like, whatever, who cares? This is me. Like show up as you. You are so awesome the way you are and everyone deserves to see it. You don't need to be fake. Feeling more confident. I'm so happy. That's awesome. Planning my first me date. Honestly, it's my favorite thing in the world. I plan a me date every week. And I even notice if I'm looking for something for, for my boyfriend to give me, as soon as I'm thinking that, it can be like something so simple, ladies. And I'm going to be so honest. Like if I am sitting there being like, man, I wish he would tell me he loved me more. I just, I'm like, no, I need to tell it to myself a million times today that I love me. And then miraculously, I don't even care if he tells me he loves me. And then he ends up doing it anyways, because I didn't care. Like it's such this cycle and relationships are so awesome. It takes work to really figure yourself. Yeah. A hundred percent. This is awesome, ladies. I'm so happy that you're with me. Perfect. Okay. So we're going to now go into, oh, I love all of this. A hundred percent. Yes. When you're your best self, you will never have any regrets because it will be right. And that is a hundred percent. And so I'm going to go into this last section, which is a little bit more into career because I know people wanted professional and career. So I want you now to create two columns. And in the first column, we're gonna talk about specifically career goals. I want you to think about what are some things that you want to achieve? You can make it short-term, long-term, whatever you feel comfortable with and whatever is best for you. You can say, I want more clients, I want more sales, I, um, what else? I wanna find an investor, I want whatever it is for you. you some career goals, I wanna get a promotion, I want to be a CEO. I want to start my own business. Whatever it is for you. Flex time. <laughs> Love it. Yeah, a lot of people, I was asking the community this week if they wanted more freedom and flexibility. 100% of people said yes. So write out some of your career goals and business and professional goals. My next career goal is retirement. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. So I guess some of the personal stuff might work better for you, but there's still things maybe, do you, have do you want to volunteer when you're done? Or do you know what you want to do after retirement? Maybe that can be where, what you do, what you put here. Okay. I'll give you, let's see. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, so then write those goals here in your like future. This is more just, you know, time. Okay, once you're done with some of your career goals, just write done in the chat so I know that you're with me. Okay, we are getting done. Okay, awesome. Now in the second column, I want you to write who do you need to meet to help you with those goals. So for example, when I did this, I want to build a million dollar business. So who did I need to meet to do that? 
well, shit, I needed to meet other people who were already building million dollar businesses. And that's okay if you do not know how to meet these people, but you need to write in that second column, who do I need to meet to make that happen? Now you can start to see how everything is blending. Because if you want to make a million dollar business, you need to meet people that create a million dollar business. You need to go back to that self exercise and be like, how am I going to start acting like a woman who has already launched and done a million dollar business? So write in this list, who do you need to meet to help you make that happen? Again, we're talking about connection and networking and and people you aren't the funny thing about this column is i don't want you to feel like you're using people to help you with those goals you're making connections and i'm going to talk a little bit about mentors and advisors after we're done this list because that's huge in this career section and or just your next step section And if you ladies don't know who you need to meet, write it in the chat box and we can also help you. And this is where within this list is also where my, where my coffee time and me dates at the Ritz Carlton came in. Cause I was like, oh man, if I need to meet people who have already made million dollar businesses and who are CEOs, where do these people hang out? Well, they're probably hanging out at high end hotels and they're traveling a lot. <laughs> So that brings us to our third part in this section of career is where do you need to meet these people? Who's up for the rent? See ladies, this is what I'm telling you. So where do you meet these people and where are they? These people may be at a yoga class. This is where the volunteering also came in. Cause I knew if I wanted to go into these high end events to meet people, I couldn't afford to go to all these events. So I was going to volunteer to get a free ticket. You can also offer exchanging of services. So if you run, I'm just throwing it out there. Let's say you have a massage company or something. You could give a raffle ticket or sorry, a prize to their raffle and or offer a free massage and maybe they'll give you a free ticket for that so you can see different ways if you don't necessarily have the funds to get in the door with these people i do not like networking events as you can tell none of my suggestions have been networking events because i feel like networking events are super fake people are just handing out their business cards i want to meet people in their natural ish habitat when they feel comfortable, when they don't feel like they're networking, they just feel like they're having a good time. And again, this goes back to what I had said before, doing things that you love. You know, if you love comedy, sign up for a comedy, a comedy lesson in your, um, in your neighborhood. I love hats and signed up for a hat making class. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. And even if you don't meet anyone, you still are getting something out of it. Yeah, exactly. She just said university courses. Awesome. Yeah. Use this chat. If you ladies, obviously we can, we're going to go around at the end, whoever is still with us and we can just do a quick intro, just say your name. Um, because I do want you to connect and we, what I can do is in the TLC Facebook group, we can start a little chat of, of who came on today so that you can all meet each other. Okay, so I wanna quickly talk about mentors and advisors because I know some of you within your career section, would that be useful to you to talk about mentors and advisors? Because this is huge. If you have career goals and or future goals and you're not there yet, you need to surround yourself with who you want to be and who you want to be around. So this is why I also, I'm going to be completely honest, if you ladies are working from home um, and or co-working spaces or any spaces or going to even a gym, if the people around you are not people you want to be with, change. You want to be inspired. And so 
I was at an event last week, which was amazing. And we were talking about how technically we should have contacts in three areas. People that are just behind us so we can be advisors too and mentors too and lead them because teaching also makes us better. People that are at our level so we can encourage them and support them and grow and inspire one another. And then people that are ahead of us that we can look up to and that can teach us. And so I want you to think, is there a part in your life that is missing? Do you have people behind you in life or age that you can help and advise and mentor? Do you have people at your age level and or just at your level on many different things? It can be anything from personal development, fitness, um, career. And then do you also have people you can look up to? And so making sure that you have all three of those areas. And if you don't, well, then that might be someone that you add to your list of people that you want to connect with. And I know for me, this past year, I was really looking at who I can look up to. And so I went out and found an advisory board and mentors for me. And I'm going to go into that right now. So if you need mentors and advisors, this is an ongoing process. You may not find someone overnight. It took me about a year, but now I have six advisors that I go to. And so one of the biggest tips that I was told, and we've talked about it at TLC events before, is find and create your own board of directors, whatever this means to you. This, these are business, health, um, what else are mine? Law, accounting. I have my own board of advisors now that I know I can go to and ask them questions in any area of my life. And so who do you, what do you want your board of directors to look like? And who do you need on that board of directors? Yeah, perfect. Linda says intergenerational friends are great too, a hundred percent. And so that's also, you're learning and, and adding so much to each other's lives. Yeah, perfect. So Sonia says that her mentors were huge in giving her confidence to pursue her career. Great. So yes, so looking at your board of directors, your advisory board, what do you need and who do you need to go out there? And again, like you see, can see, this is all kind of tying together. This can also tie back to that career and or future is who are, what are you looking like? What do you want your future to look like and who do you need to meet to make that happen? And so if you need to build out different components of your advisory board, legal, accounting, health, business, what are those areas and where can we find those? So we already have talked about where we can find some of those people. Now, another opportunity to find these people, Facebook, Instagram, websites. So finding advisors, and building your advisory board may take time. You are interviewing these people too. If these are gonna be your go-to people that you trust with deep questions and helping you build the life that you've always wanted, you need to trust these people and you need to like these people. They do not need to be like you. Some of my advisors are very different. I am super spiritual and I have one advisor who is not spiritual at all. I mean, he barely meditates and he doesn't care, but he's been very successful too. And so really looking at talking to them, getting to know them, building a relationship, and then flat out asking them. And you can do this at many different points in your relationship. If you get to the point where you're like, I like this person, I want this person to be my mentor, you need to ask them. So I flat out asked them and I said something that sounded like this. I said, hey, I love what you do. I, you really inspire me. I really look up to you. Could I consider you one of my mentors or could I consider you one of my advisors? They all said yes. Once they said yes, 
I ask them, that's awesome. What does that relationship look like to you? Really getting clear on what your advisor and mentor relationship looks like is really important for your success and for the other person out of respect for them and to respect their time. Some people have said, you know, let's do a monthly call. Other people, we, I just ask them when I have a question and then we hop on a quick call. I also ask them, what's the best way to communicate with you? Facebook, email, text, WhatsApp. So really getting clear on what your mentor and advisor relationship looks like. Yeah, so joining other board of directors is also great. That's perfect. Anybody else part of a board of directors or leadership teams? I would love to be. Yeah. So then even looking at different parts. So this is also where we can be of service. So when all of my advisors said, yes, I do not pay them. <laughs> right. And it's just because we want to be of service to others. So if we're asking others to be of service to us, we also have to look at how can we be of service to others? Some advisory boards, they do get paid, but looking at how can you serve others? And this goes back to the intergenerational, looking at people that are a little bit behind us. How can we just continue to mentor others? And then other people will serve us as well. So it's always like that. Um, what is it called when, uh, Oh my goodness. Now, what is it called when you rent like uh, not random acts of kindness, but when someone does something nice for you and then you do something nice, what the heck is that called? Why can't I think about this? Pay it forward. Yes. So it's like paying it forward. You're going to help somebody else. Other people will help you too. People are kind. I still can't believe I have the advisors I do and they're amazing. Okay. Awesome. Make sure you pick uh, find like-minded people. Yeah. Okay. Any questions about this career, advisors, mentors, board of directors? I know we've talked about a lot of things and I hope this will give you some things to do and exercises to do and really think about after this call and really break it down. It's some, with some of these things, it's almost like school. You get more out of it what you do after the webinar, not necessarily what you do on the webinar. Any comments or questions? Anyone there? Does anyone want to share? Remotivated. Good. Awesome. I'm glad. Anyone want to share any highlights or anything they're going to, they're going to take away one big aha or just moment so that we can all commit to each other of something that we can do something else that I want to give a tip. If you, if the mindset stuff really resonated with you and being your best self, when I really started committing to it, I set my alarm on my phone for every two hours at the two hour mark. I would think to myself, how am I feeling right now? Am I acting like my best self? Because I wasn't even, I knew best self, but I wasn't practicing her, nor was I catching when I wasn't practicing her. So I needed that phone reminder, right? Once you start to get very familiar being her, practicing her, you'll know when you're off and when you're not being her. But if you need those little reminders, your phone and technology are really good reminders to help you stay accountable. Yeah, awesome. This is great. I'm happy this is resonating with you ladies. Perfect. Okay. So we are about to finish up. Oh, a couple tips. If you does anyone feel nervous about Oh, I'm happy this has been motivating. Yes, ladies. Awesome. Okay. It, does anyone feel nervous or scared to talk to people? If so, I can give just a couple tips. So, yes. Okay, Jen. So again, I think this goes back to ideal self and not having any expectations. My go-to for talking to people 
I look for people. So don't put so much pressure on yourself that you have to talk to everyone. Number one is look at your self-talk and what's going on when you're feeling nervous. Because chances are we're like, oh no, are they, look, what are they going to think of me? What am I going to say? Like, get out of your own head. Release all expectation that anything has to happen from that conversation. Back to what Sonia said, if you're being your best self, you can't say the wrong thing. Go to people where you like their energy. Don't force connections with people that you don't want to be talking to. It's not worth your time. And if you like their energy, you can give them a genuine compliment. I always do go with the compliment because it really, it breaks down your walls. You can also see how they respond to the compliment. It'll show you a lot about who they are but it can be anything from like, I love your energy, to I like your outfit, to you have a beautiful smile and I just wanted to say hi. Like when you're being real and just sharing, again, how can you ask yourself in the situation, how can I make a human connection in this moment? Take nothing out of it. But then I also need to add, if you feel nervous about these things, the most important thing when you're networking is, uh, what they say in sales, you need to ask for their information. If you like someone and you want to make a connection, you want to be friends with them, you need to say, hey, I've really loved hanging out with you. You know, can I get your email or can I get your phone number or Instagram, whatever it is. You have to make, you have to close it and you have to make that connection so that you do see them again. Making friends is kind of like dating. If you saw a guy or a girl or someone who you'd want to date, you have to say, hey, I'd like to take you out on a date. So you're kind of dating friends. And that's where the awkward part comes in is when we're adults is because we don't ask. Because when you're in a student in school, that's natural. You just see each other every day. But when you're an adult, you have to just take, you know, drink that cup of courage and say, I really enjoyed hanging out with you. We should grab a tea sometime. If you want to do a date, with a friend, same rules apply. Shorter the better in the beginning. Go for tea or coffee or like a yoga class or something that you both enjoy. Don't put too much pressure on it because you may go for dinner and realize this date isn't working. So just make sure to close the deal that way. Okay, we're gonna finish up because it is 8.35 and I like to end on time. I really appreciate all you being here. I wanted to give you a couple things. Good advice. Awesome. Yeah, they totally will. People are thrilled when like someone asks you on a date. Think about it. It's like, of course. And one other tip, if you are busy, don't worry. I actually now, especially because I've been traveling a ton, I'm actually in New York right now. When people ask me on a date, I say, yes, but you know, I'm actually traveling for the next couple of weeks. Do you want to do a Zoom like what we're on right now? Do you want to do a Zoom date? And you can do that too. I have had so many virtual <laughs> dates with people and that's totally cool. It saves you time. You don't have to be in the same location and you're still making contact and connection because networking can be very time consuming. So don't be afraid to have a phone call first or a Zoom chat first if you don't know if you can meet them in person. Okay, see, anyone, Anna, anyone who wants, so what I'll do, I'm going to go into the Facebook group right now, and I'm going to start a mini chat of everyone who's in this. So if you want to connect and you want to meet people who are in this event right now, just comment, say who you are, what you do, and then you can all connect and see if you want to, if you want to meet. Next week, so I want to be very clear, because now we're doing weekly webinars. They are all different topics. They are personal, professional information. Next week, um, so we have this one obviously today. Next week is Craig Valentine. He is actually one of my advisors. He is very different from me, but he is amazing. He has built a multi million dollar business in coaching and fitness. So he started in the fitness industry doing videos. You can follow him on Instagram. And then he transitioned into coaching and he now helps entrepreneurs build multi-million dollar businesses. So he's going to come on and talk about all about 
how to schedule your day, how to be more productive, efficient, and how to get things done. I've gone to so many of his workshops and implementing a lot of what he does has changed my day and made me a lot more productive and then helped me bring in more revenue. So love what he does. The week after that is a parenting session. Love parenting, even though I'm not a parent, um, because it helps me better understand my friends, my relationships. You can apply these techniques into any relationship, even the ones we're talking about tonight. Um, and it also helps you understand your parents, has given me better relationships with my parents. And then the week after, so I'm just going over our September, the last week in September, we're interviewing the CEO and founder of Wax On Bar, Wax, Wax On Wax Bar. And she is awesome. Lexi, you can look her up. She's going to be talking all about how she built her business, funding, her franchise model. So she's going to talk about business, but then she's also going to talk a little bit about being a woman in business, also balancing her career with her professional life or sorry, her personal life. Cause she just had a baby. She just got married. So we're going to have just a real fireside chat with her. You can ask her any questions and come on in. Now, how it works, because I know this one was free. Our next webinars are not free. Now, however, what we're doing is we just launched our online queen membership. I will send that to you in an email. What that means is we right now have for a monthly or annual fee, you can join all of our webinars, get all of our playbacks, as well as get event discounts for live events as well as be the first founding members for our online app. Now we've gotten quite a few questions about the app and we started it because of exactly what we're talking about tonight. So many people knew exactly who they wanted to meet. They, and they were getting really specific. Like I want to meet a woman who's in finance, who also just had a baby. And I was like, I don't know how to give you this person. And so what we did was we created a, a database and a platform that you can go on, create a personal and professional profile so that you can search people who you're looking for. So your mentor, I want to find someone in accounting who's been in accounting for 10 years plus. You can find all of these people in our app. And so our online queen membership will also get you the app. So you're going to get the app, the webinars, and the live event discounts all for the same price. So right now we launched our pre-sale for the app because the app is launching in November. And so we slashed all the prices in half because we knew we were going to have some glitches when we launch our app. And we're, you're going to be a founding member and just be with us through that growth. So right now for $11, you can get all of what I mentioned, $11 a month. And then, or $120 for the year, you get everything and the playbacks and events. So that's cheaper than attending one webinar because our webinars are $20 or you can just become an online queen and get it all. So I will email that to you in a link as well. Do you guys have any questions or any comments? We are finishing up now. Okay, see Linda. You can do the webinar or the Zoom chat since she doesn't live in Toronto. Linda's up for Zoom if anyone wants to do a Zoom meeting with her. Okay, awesome. Thanks, Jen. All right, ladies, I'm going to let you go. We are a little bit over. Thank you so much for being here. I hoped, you know, I'm so glad that this helped and I learned. You can create a Zoom account for free. It doesn't cost anything as long as you keep your meetings under an hour. So just register for Zoom. It's super easy. And then you have your link. Okay. Awesome. Thanks ladies. Have a wonderful evening and I will chat with you soon. Thanks for being here. See you next Tuesday.